Barakada Yahawa, Barakada Yahawashai, Bahashom, Rakahak Wadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahashom, Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, am out there pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be profiling a couple of minutes of this clip from Scopy Here's YouTube channel titled Douglas McGregor Expose Russia Big and Secret Move in the Caribbean, or Caribbean Black Sea Causing Panic in U.S. Military. And I won't be dealing with that in this video, but just with the little segment I will play, you know, you can call this a, a prophecy dump because a lot of points prophetically are about to be made in you know these next couple of minutes of this clip and it just goes to show that we truly are living you know in the last days really the last seconds of the last days at this point before the second coming of our lord Shai, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called jesus who's coming to save the elect of the nation of israel the nation of Israel consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the Israelite foreigners who have been scattered and over the generations have come to look like these heathens and to also make war and put an end to the rulership of these heathen nations, chiefly of the biblical Edomites or these so-called white people as they're known today. But this is a fair use copyright disclaimer. I do not own any of the footage in this clip, nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily. It is simply for educational purposes. Yeah. And one thing that people need to understand is there's great tension between the European Union and NATO. So there's a, there is a constant tension. The European Union is supposed to be a, a political consortium. NATO is supposed to be a military consortium. And there's great... Hey, point number one. There's great tension between the EU or European Union and NATO, which are what, you know, two different entities, a part of the same system. The EU is the economic bloc of, uh, you know, the last leg of the fourth beast, while NATO is the military aspect of it. And some countries that are in NATO are not in the EU and vice versa. But it's a part of biblical prophecy that there would be friction between these systems between Esau Edom's, you know, rulership. But this is Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 40. And this is dealing with the statue of a man that King Nebuchadnezzar of uh, the Neo-Babylonian Empire saw in his dream that uh, the prophet Daniel interpreted for him. And that statue of a man made of different metals represented the different heathen kingdoms that would be ruling before you know the establishment of the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of israel the kingdom of yahabo bahashem yahabashai but this is daniel chapter 2 verse 40 and as the header says rome and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise that fourth kingdom you know, those legs of iron, the ancient pagan Edomite Roman Empire. Now we're going into the last leg of the fourth beast. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, which is this NATO EU system that the U.S. is a part of and at the head of that's, you know, currently, you know, the top power on the planet right now. It's the reincarnated Roman Empire. And, you know, the part of clay goes into the EU, you know, the weaker economic aspect, while that part of iron goes into the NATO, the stronger military aspect. And it can also go into what? Something called the pigs, which uh, stands for Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain, which are what your weaker economic and military nations within this system. Why you have uh, your stronger nations like the U.S., Britain, France, you know, Germany, the usual suspects. But as it says, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom 
shall be divided. And what do we just hear in that clip? A lot of people don't understand that there's great division, great friction between the EU and NATO. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And we're coming to the point where it's going to be completely broken. These Edomites are about to turn on each other. You know, mainly these European Edomites turning against these American Edomites. And what does it say in Mark chapter 3, verses 24 to 25? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house, you know, the race, the nation within that kingdom be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Great tension because there's a lot of money to be made in the military industrial complex of Europe that the, that the United States of America is a, is a big, big part of. So that's just... Hey. And he's just said a lot of that tension is due to what? The military industrial complex, which the U.S. has a major part in. And that's another part of biblical prophecy. You know, America bullying and lording over her European allies and causing them to uh, get involved in a lot of her, you know, military and economic adventures abroad. But the Europeans are always the ones that what? Feel the blowback from it. But this is Daniel chapter 7, verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Again, talking about that ancient pagan Roman Empire, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. And now we're going into uh, the last leg of the fourth beast, you know, the beginning stages of it, which happened with the Renaissance or the rebirth when Esau, Edom and that Roman way came back into power. And where it says, you know, the other which came up, that's speaking of that little horn, America, that spake great things against the Most High and before whom three fell. That's talking about the three major powers in the what what was called back then the new world before you know the 13 colonies you know had their independence from britain and created what you know is the united states of america today but those three that fell is speaking of britain france and spain which you had the revolutionary war you had the louisiana purchase which involved france and then what the spanish american war even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout, more powerful, more proud than his fellows. Like I just said, whenever America goes to war with these different nations or throws sanctions on them, they always push their European allies to do the same. But when there's a refugee crisis or a, you know, economic blowback, such as a, you know, these European nations suffering by not doing business with Russia in natural gas or oil because they rely much more heavily on Russia with that than the U.S. <laughs> who fills the who fills the blowback the most? These European nations. Hence why there's division. This kingdom is divided. Let's just table that because this and that, that is a huge, huge deal. Russia, as we say, the enemy has a vote. Russia has voted and Russia has planted offensive. I mean, and I mean substantial offensive wep uh, weapon systems in our neighborhood. They are here now. So let's just put that aside. Middle East. The Middle East is another mess. It's an absolute disaster. And I do believe that that uh, that Israel's survival is at stake. Uh, and hey, the 1948 er state will be destroyed. And that's another major part of biblical prophecy. The War of Armageddon, the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, in that so-called Middle Eastern region, really Western Asia. And it's going to be, you know, the 1948 ers the state of Israel, who aren't, you know, the true children of the Most High. They're Amalekite Edomites. 
that are going to foment tensions to gather these uh, nations down into that region for the War of Armageddon. This is Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he had taken against Edom, you so-called white people, the Americans, the British, the Europeans, the Russians, the 1948ers, and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Those 1948ers doing something to what foment this wider war which they're doing a perfect job at it with this uh war they're having with you know hamas and those palestinian people right now due to those events surrounding october 7th what has it done it's united the so-called arab world you know on the side of the palestinians and against those 1948ers and then what you've got iran involved in the mix which whenever Israel finally pushes for that war against Iran, that's just going to be the, the fuse that's going to blow this bomb up. You know, the shot heard around the world because Russia is Russia and China are not going to allow Iran to go the way of Iraq or Libya. And the U.S. is not going to allow the 1948ers to go down either. So. The least of the flock is going to draw them out. The the operations in Gaza, the operations in, and now we see Hezbollah is rearing its head, and, and there's a lot of operations going on in uh, in Lebanon. Iran is still behind all this. The the bigger uh, the you know the, you got the Houthi rebels that are still uh, showing all these uh, different. Arab, you know, nations and uh, organizations, hey, the least of the flock, drawing them out. This is Second Ezra chapter 15 in the Apocrypha. I'm going to start at verse 28. Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, you know, the so-called Middle East, Western Asia, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. Hey, what you're seeing, you know, Hamas at war with the 1948ers. Now there's tensions between Hezbollah and Lebanon and the 1948ers. You've got what, you know, these other Arab nations, you know, allying, allying with the Palestinian people against the 1948ers. Hey, it's going to get to a point to where these Arab nations are going to send out their armies against the 1948ers and that's going to be what them sending out their armies against the west chiefly the u.s and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth that all they which hear them may fear and tremble also the carmanians which when you look up ancient carmania it's in iran so this is talking about the iranians and what did that guy just say? You know, Iran is heavily involved in these situations. Raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. Join battle with the dragons of Arabia, allying with them. Again, that guy in that clip said you've got, you know, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis. And at the head of it is Iran and shall waste a portion of of the land of the Assyrians. And this is talking about the spiritual Assyrians, the United States of America, and best believe that there are sleeper cells over in the US from Iran, from a lot of these different Arab countries that are waiting to get the call to what? Attack, you know, different targets here. Just, uh, you know, the other week, what did you have? Eight, you know, Tajikistan, which I don't think that's in the Middle East. I think that's, you know, more towards Eastern Europe, you know, around th that area that were just apprehended and suspected of, uh, you know, planning and attacks who had ties to ISIS. And then you've got, you know, Iranians coming across the border, Turks coming across the border, Syrians coming across the border. And some of them have said, look, hey, we are here, you know, to handle business. 
You had one Syrian guy who was on one of those terror watch lists saying, hey, you don't know who I am now, but you're about to know and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Showing their, their, their abilities down there in the, in the Arabian Sea. bring it back a little bit. Find all this. The, the bigger, uh, the, you know, the, you got the Houthi rebels that are still uh, showing their, their, their abilities down there in the, in the Arabian Sea and in the Red Sea area, Bondo al-Abbas. Al but the one thing I want people to understand is that they're... The Arabian Sea, the Red Sea, and who's there battling the Houthis, the U.S. military the navy which brings me to joel chapter 2 verse 20 but i will remove far off from you the northern army the north american army the u.s military the navy the air force the army the marines all branches and will drive him into a land barren and desolate like a desert western asia with his face toward the east sea and uh the main staging ground for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is going to be Saudi Arabia, which what just happened. Saudi Arabia decided not to renew uh, the petrodollar deal, meaning that they aren't just going to exclusively sell their oil in uh, the U.S. dollar, which is going to be a major blow to the U.S. economy. And whenever, you know, nations try to go against that U.S. dollar system, <laughs> what happens? Tensions. So, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the East Sea. And when you look at a map of the Middle East, you've got Saudi Arabia. And what do you have towards the east? The Persian Gulf. And what's above that? Iran. And then to the northeast, you've got Iraq, where the U.S. has a small military presence and the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And this hinder part or behind them toward the utmost sea, which is what? You've got the Red Sea which again, the U.S. has a, a military presence there already due to, you know, the Houthi rebels and stuff like that. And then just recently, what are they talking about? Instituting acts that automatically register, you know, U.S. men between ages 18 and 26 for a draft. And they're also talking about getting women involved in the draft as well. They're getting ready to bolster up that northern army so they can send them off into that land barren and desolate, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in Joel chapter 3. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. And there's going to be a great slaughter of U.S. military personnel and these other heathens as militaries in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And if you're a soldier that finds themselves in that land that's barren and desolate, you better come to terms with that being your final resting place. There is a strong and very, very powerful alliance between China, Russia, and Iran. Let's pull it back a little bit. But the one thing I want people to understand is that there is a strong and very, very powerful alliance between China russia and iran and and we cannot lose sight of that and all of this plays into the the efforts that are going on in the middle east and i just feel like there's only so much intellectual uh, uh capital that we have and resource capital that we have to be able to do all the things that we used to be able to do very adeptly now we don't have that and we certainly don't have the leaders in uh in this administration that are capable of juggling those these very, very dangerous crystal balls that they're juggling right now. And so, well, you know, you know, you know from your own experience that Washington is a one crisis town. Yeah. They can't handle more than one thing at a time. But you know, here's something else. No one seems to be paying attention to the destruction of the petrodollar. Saudi Arabia has said, no, we're not going to renew it. And people are saying, well, how could this be? Well, if your two biggest customers for all of the oil in the Persian Gulf are India and China. Exactly. It makes perfect sense. So when people stop doing business in dollars, what does that mean to us? Well, it's going to harm us. It's going to destroy our bond market. It's going to ratchet up inflation. It'll hike interest rates. Why? Because we can't cope 
you know, the success, the success. His, uh, Let's go to the book of Obadiah. I'm going to start at verse one and, uh, you know, I'll read verse two and jump down to verse seven. And this whole book is uh, dedicated to the downfall and the judgment of you Edomites. As the header reads, Edom will be humbled. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. You know, your reputation being made small. And a lot of these nations are looking at the West, chiefly the U.S., as the main cause, which it is, of all the problems on the face of the earth. Why our economies are in shambles. Why our, uh, you know, communities are destroyed. Why these constant wars are taking place in our countries that set up puppets that allow the West to rape us of our resources, etc., etc. Hence, why you're seeing a lot of these nations in the so-called third world moving towards the east, towards bricks, for an economic alternative. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy, or your allies, have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee, as such as Saudi Arabia having that exclusive petrodollar deal, have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, decide not to renew that that 50 year petrodollar exclusivity deal they that eat thy bread because saudi arabia receives what a lot of military weaponry and protection from the u.s have laid a wound under thee and that's a major wound to the u.s that the petrodollar is no longer the uh exclusive means which to buy uh saudi oil there is none understanding in him Hey, these biblical prophecies are flying off the pages and right into your face in real time. Economically, historically, for the United States and the world was that the dollar has to be weak and the consumer has to be strong. Well, that's all fallen apart. We're in a lot of trouble. Nobody seems to connect that with all of this overseas adventurism. It's almost as though people think, really do believe that we have limitless resources and power when we don't. And we don't. And, and one of the things that's happening and the this BRICS consortium, you know, the the this economic powerhouse that now has and BRICS alone is like 47 percent of the global population. Uh, the other nation states that have joined it, you just mentioned one, Saudis, the Turks have, have, uh, have as well, I think UAE and others. I mean, we're looking at about another 20 nations that represent about 85 percent of the world's population from nation states powerful nation states that have their own economies, their own military. Hey, behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. There's their own ideas about the way the world should work. And, and the United States right now doesn't fit inside of that. And, and, in, and Russia is the head of that consortium at, at this moment in time in history. They are going to have a large summit in the October time frame. He just said Russia is the head of this, and that's a part of biblical prophecy. This is Ezekiel chapter 38. I'm going to start at verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, speaking of Russia, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. The Most High putting those Russians back in that confrontational Soviet Union spirit, which we can clearly see. Russia, you know, just brought a few of its naval forces, you know, nuclear powered submarines and warships into the Caribbean, to Cuba, and what should come to mind. Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Russia's military might mainly being gathered into the Valley of Jehoshaphat. 
for the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Verse 5, Persia, which is the ancient name for Iran. And what did that guy say a little while ago in that video? That the, the major players right now who are, are forming a strong alliance is China, Russia, and Iran. Ethiopia, which has been talking about, you know, dropping the use of the U.S. dollar and looking towards BRICS. And Libya with them, which Russia has uh, ties with. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, which is speaking of Turkey. And what? Turkey is uh, you know, showing interest in joining the BRICS, which would be a major blow to you know the NATO EU system because Turkey is a major part of NATO and where Turkey's position is on the world, they hey they, they are strategically located to move military forces and all his bands, the House of Togerma of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them russia spearheading everything and being a guard unto these smaller nations economically right now through bricks and then militarily when the battle in the valley of jehoshaphat takes place what i believe and i'll just throw this out and, and, and ask you for your your ideas about this. What I believe is that we are now starting to see the shift away from the petrodollar to some other form of digital currency. And we've been talking about this central bank digital currency for a long time. This administration under Biden has signed up for it. You can go to, people can go to executive order 14067. Go look it up. And that's another thing everything is culminating into. Hey, these CBDCs or central bank digital currencies which what is going to be the apparatus for you to use them hey the m-a-r-k-o-f-t-h-e-b-e-a-s-t in revelation 13 verses 16 to 18 which is the rfid slash nfc c hip micro implant and and study it because you need to understand what it is but we're we're going to move there where our our behavior, our biometric behavior is going to be known and then our control of our own wealth, our own money is going to be under the, the guise of a central bank system and which is a which is a globalist type system. The Chinese Hey, a central bank system with your biometrics, that's gonna be a globalist system. This is Revelation chapter thirteen. <laughs> I'm going to start at verse 16. And he calls it all that he, speaking of those globalists, the Edomites, the elites of the Edomites, such as your Rothschilds and your Rockefellers, calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a M-A-R-K, that C-hip in their right hand or in their foreheads. They're working on those uh, forehead C-hips with what? BCIs or brain computer interfaces like Neuralink and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the Karagma or the name of the beast or the number of his name once this uh, Karagma is rolled out and mandatorily implemented you won't be able to do anything in society without it buy and sell get a job travel abroad etc etc and it's going to get so dire out here to where you will be faced with being put to death for not receiving it. Run it back a little bit. Is going to be under the, the guise of a central bank system, and which, is a, which is a globalist type system. The Chinese have been using the, you know, they, they, they use this social credit score. And so if you're politically aligned with them, with their, with their with their ideas, you're okay, and, they'll, and they're, you're allowed to do certain things with your wealth. And this is the direction that we're heading. We're heading into a direction where, where if your ideology underpinnings don't align with the government that's in charge, and I'm talking about America, then they may, they may make a move to control your ability to spend your money. I mean, it could be that basic. And oh, no, I'm you're 100% right. That they may neither buy nor sell, save they that have got the karagma, the name of the beast or the number of his name 
So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Hey, again, as we can clearly see, these prophecies are jumping off the pages into real time. We are almost out of here. So to you sincere Akim and Akwath out there, hey, just keep strong. Hey, our salvation is nearer than when we believed. So as always, I'm going to say a bad babal, kwam yasharala, and until next time, shalom.